going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Faithful Fanatic Show here on DSM Media's YouTube channel. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter at DSM underscore media. Subscribe to the new DSM Philadelphia channel. I'm one half of your host, Dylan Davis. To my right, my faithful co-host, Scotty. And on this Friday episode, we are talking Phillies. We're talking about how they took three out of four from the Washington Nationals, how they've been one of the best baseball teams since the beginning of June. Oh, and by the way, Michael Lorenzen decided to make history the other night by throwing a no-hitter in his debut at Citizens Bank Park. My man, Scotty Wood, is going on on this Friday. Happy Friday, my brother. Happy Friday to all the faithful fanatics out there. Um, yes, Michael Lorenzen. Wow. Uh, no-hitter, 14th in, in Philadelphia Phillies history, which is uh, just crazy to think about. This guy was just traded for at the deadline and comes yeah. in, has an eight-inning uh, outing, and then a, a full-game outing, right? No-hitter. Um, so he's been lights out. Obviously, we're, we're going to talk about uh, the recent series against the Nats, kind of how the bats have been activated, but Happy Friday out there, everybody. I'm I'm happy to be Feels here. Feels good, man. Feels Discuss good. This is one of the, we're recording this later on the day. Had some things to work out earlier. So um th- this feels different. We never do a later show on, on a we- heading Friday into Friday afternoon. Week, but it feels nice. And we had to. And why do we have to? For the reasons you just laid out. Michael Lorenzen makes history, 14th Phillies pitcher ever to to record a no hitter. Um Roy Halliday did it tw- uh did it twice in one season back in twenty eleven, I believe. Um, but this one was special. This one was different, man. And it's the not reason, common in this day and age. No, it, it's not common. He's a decent. They pulled up the list the other night. There's been a decent amount of pitchers since the game was established that have thrown a no hitter in their home opener, like in their home debut. Um, mm-hmm. But a major, everyone outside of Lorenzen and one other were from. 1960 and before a bunch were in the late 1800s so this isn't common man and he comes over at the deadline do do you think the trade worked out i I think the trade worked out uh scotty but he obviously we we were high on him after the marlin start on the road he went through eight innings it helped the bullpen it helped this rotation get some much needed rest they come away with a win he only surrenders two runs and we're like wow man like if you can get that that's yeah. much needed from this dude, even if he has to go to the bullpen come yeah. postseason time. Well, with what he's what he did the other night, screw that. Michael Lorenzen is in the middle of this rotation, and he's in this rotation to stay. And there's so much that went on the other night besides his no hitter. Cassiano's homers twice hits his 200th in his career. Yeah. Um, Wes Wilson comes up first at bat in the major leagues. He's like 28, 29 years old. Like he's an old minor league player. He's a journeyman. He's not really supposed to be here. He homers in his first at bat um, in the majors. That was awesome. His family's there. Lorenzen's mom, obviously his dad passed away years ago. Lorenzen's mom, his wife, his, his kid, they're all there. And just the emotion from the Phillies team, from him, from, from everybody in the ballpark, his family, it was effing awesome awesome dude like yeah. people ask like, why do you care so much about sports that's that is that is the perfect yeah. example of why dude but i want to kind of break down what he was able to accomplish again it's the washington nationals but it's a washington nationals team that had been hot offensively going back the last two or three series yeah. um so when you take that into account the way he was able to you know immobilize them and slow them down was huge he only had four or five, four strikeouts or something like that. Like a lot of balls were put in play. He trusted his defense. They made the correct, they made the plays for him. The first inning, he had multiple uh, walks, multiple full counts, had over 20 pitch count. No one thought that was possible. And in the (laughs) same breath, before I throw this to you, I do want to tip the cap to Rob Thompson because I never, 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 never in a million years expected Rob Thompson to trot him back out there in the ninth inning. If he didn't, I think C- Citizens Bank Park would have burned down that night. And I'm kind of yeah. not joking, but yeah. I'm surprised that he did. However, when you look at everything behind it, the fact they now have a six-man rotation, the yeah. fact that they have two days off next week, yeah. that played a decision into that played a factor in the decision for Topper to let him go back out there. But you have to tip your cap. He threw 124 yeah. pitches, dude. Career high. Um yeah, he allowed I, him to do it. Lorenzen goes out and does it. And it was a memorable moment. Yeah, I, I think you know, when you think about Topper and, and tipping the cap to him, I think that's what I mean when you know, in this era or this day and age of baseball, it's just not common for your pitcher to to finish a game. Like the, even oh. if they are going to, through a no hitter, you know, up until the seventh, eighth inning, sometimes 
you'll still see that pitcher get pulled uh, in, in certain situations. So to see Topper, somebody who has been questionable about pulling guys too early this season, not pulling guys soon enough, you know, just not knowing the right point in the game to pull these guys at some, right. some point. Right, he pulled Christopher this season. Sanchez. Pull Christopher yeah. Sanchez through five after five five innings and he's tearing it up right like yeah. so it, it, it's just been awkward with the way that uh Topper has done things this season sometimes and this one was just the one where the puzzle the puzzle yeah. piece fit perfectly um and it worked out just the way you want to see it. it it is man whenever you see stuff like that you see parents up in the stands crying of the players it moves you and it, it it's it's like a fairy tale type yep. of setting and you know, this whole series, right? Or not, I shouldn't even say this series, man. This homestand for the Phillies has been the, much, much needed. You're a vibe much, guy. Much needed, you're a big man. vibe guy. Yeah. The vibes are high with this team right now. Yeah, exactly, man. Well, and I know there's some losses mixed in there. What? They're five and two on the seven game homestand yeah. right now. Some bad losses mixed in there, but you're five and two on the homestand, and guys are getting their feet on the ground. They're getting their feet under them, man. Trey Turner. Seven game hit streak right now. He's hit. He's hit in every single home game so far, right? Is he going to go on a ten game hit streak? I don't know, right? We'll see at the end of this homestand. But guys are turning it on. Um, you've seen eighteen home runs during this homestand, Dylan. Seven games, eighteen home runs from this Phillies team. They're hitting the ball out of the park. Yeah. Um, and that's just what you needed to to go along with Lorenzen's no hitter. There's a reason I bring that up. Because the guys supported him with runs. Even if he gave up one or two, he would have yeah. still won the game because the bats showed up. And uh, usually we don't get that good balance where, you know, the pitcher is is getting us through. Uh, right. you know, it's one or the other. Right? And then, you know, the, the bats usually just aren't there when you get a game like that. <laughs> This time you had the bats going ham. They they were raking, and then you have the uh, Michael Lorenzo throwing a no hitter. Everything came full circle in that game, and then you move to the next day. They didn't let the adrenaline get too ahead of them. Mm -hmm. They didn't get too full of themselves. They go out there and they take care of business in that right. game as well. They were losing in that game. It was only a one yeah. run game, but they were losing in that game halfway through. The bats seemed dead. I think it's a great point. I the Lorenzo thing before we wrap that up. Yeah. It was it was special. It was historic. It's memorable, but. It's just funny, man, like how, like you said, how everything aligned that night and hearing the fact that he hadn't thrown a change up <laughs> in a couple of years and he gets back to working with Caleb Cotham back here in Philly since he was, since his Cincinnati days yeah. and Cotham gets to throw the change up and he threw it. I forget how many times, tens of times, 40 times or whatever the count was the other night. And it's just it's becoming another pitch in his arsenal as yeah. if he needed one in this all-star season that he's having. Right. So that plays it. Everything was perfect the other night. Um, but the bottom line is this acquisition of Michael Lorenzen again, only two starts, but it's yeah. hard not to get caught up in, in, you know, the romance the of this best. moment, right. Of this yeah. game. It's he's not just another guy. This no. isn't your fifth starter come playoff time. He, he doesn't look, they're all it's Wheeler's been man. great. Even his demeanor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a Philly guy. No, I agree with you. And the way his post-game interview, the way he embraced the city and yeah. the way his – did you see the Phillies waiting for him? at the, Like, they – like, I, I don't know yeah. if I've ever seen that. No, I did, all yeah. All the family was on the yeah. field with everybody. They were all standing and just waiting for him at the staircase of the dugout, waiting for him to get done his interview. Beautiful moment, man. It, it was unbelievable, but that's the point. That's where I'm trying to yeah. wrap this conversation up by with the Renzen. The we're playing with. Yeah. Like, and shout out to, again, I'm going to shout out Mark Henry Jr. on this show, man, because he's yeah. been kind of the leader of, like, fans are finally coming around to how good this team has been, and it's yeah. showing at the ballpark. That's why the vibes feel so high. Because this about there's still people on, on Twitter and social media that are down on this team, and they're not real, and every they, they live and die by every win and loss throughout the season. But Mark's been saying it since the beginning of June. Since June 2nd, they're the second best baseball team behind only the Atlanta Braves. Yeah. Since June said it's mid August. So for a two month stretch, over two months now, they are the may arguably the best team in the major leagues. They might have the deepest rotation. And that lineup you alluded to a few minutes ago is yeah. starting to produce 
like it was built to produce. This is yeah. what Dave Dombrowski did. This was the vision that he and this fan base had, and they're starting to starting to hit with power. They're starting to hit with runners in scoring position. They're starting to feed off that crowd energy, and maybe the crowd energy is just getting higher because it's August, and they know that pennant. You know the the playoffs are just around the corner in two mo- in less than two months. But that was my point. That all those fans that were down, oh, we don't know if they're too real. That seems to have gone out the window, at least for the yeah. forty-five thousand that are showing up to the yeah. game every night, because they're bought into this team, and the team's <laughs> bought into them, and it's like the wheels are just starting to turn for another run, like last year, dude. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. Like I said earlier, eighteen home runs during this home stand. You can see the bats are starting to activate. And, you know, it's even gotten to the point where you're you've kind of moved past Trey Turner now and you just move to like the next guy, like wait until Bryce Harper gets back to full strength. Right. Like wait until you see him added to this lineup when he's at full strength. So, like, it is coming together, man. Everybody's, you know, putting in the work. Even Cassianos this month, he has six home runs in the month of August. We're only, what, 11 days into the month. It's the most amount of home runs that he's had in any single month this season. So yeah. it just tells you where he's at right now. And mind you, I, I don't know if it was last night or the night before, but his son, uh, is it Liam? Liam? Yeah, yeah Liam. he was just going around the stadium yeah. talking to everybody. So out, he, he's, on a name, he's on a first-name basis with all the ushers. At yeah. Park. He's out <laughs> in left bad. field with, with Lorenzen and Wilson's family. He's, he's behind home plate for Knicks at bats. He's above, the first that, base dugout. He's above the dugout for – for other innings um it's hilarious dude but he he's the epitome of the vibe of this team right now yeah. dude like that yeah. that's basically what encompasses how this Enjoy. team feels right now um and it's just it's fun that that's the best way i can describe yeah. it every night like you know better than anyone doing the show with me baseball is a momentum sport and it's something i talked about for all those people at the end of last year that were like, does it even matter if they get in this team's not, no, that's not true because of how big of a momentum sport this is. And when you're hot, you're hot. And this is how this team was built. And you saw it firsthand last year. There were times this season where man, every night out there, it doesn't matter the lineup. It doesn't matter who, what the pitching matchup is. It could be Wheeler versus a fifth starter. There were times where you just felt like they could lose any given night. Yeah. Now, it's where you think and believe they're going to win every single night. That's the difference with the roller coaster. This team is on the up and up right now, man, and it's yeah. it, it's got everything um, to do with the with this fan base and the energy. I I truly believe. Like I don't know. It, it, maybe you believe in coincidence coincidences more than I do, but is it a coincidence that this team comes home and they cheer Trey Turner that way, and now everybody's going? Castellanos is hitting everything out of the ballpark. ballpark. <laughs> Schwarber was on an O for 20 run. He hits three home runs in two games. Harper oh, starts to get his out. power back. It's and it's weird, man. Yeah. It's weird. It's it's been a lot of fun. Um Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola. Yeah. When I have this conversation. Um, <laughs> because we, when we talked about Lorenzen and we're talking about this this rotation heading towards playoff time. Wheeler is your number one. There's no if ends or buts about it. That's your number one, okay? Yeah. Um, but then moving on from that, I got two months to continue to watch this team and see what see what the best route is, right? And hopefully Rob Thompson's on the same page here because this should not be set in stone. Um, we know what Ranger Suarez can do in postseason baseball and the different roles he can fill. Taiwan Walker has his ERA under four, leads the NL and leads the league and wins the NL and wins, right? You see what Lorenzen can do, but then you get to Nola who you would assume is your number two. And he, you know, he got through five scoreless, obviously had the runners because of the Wilson uh, error out in right field. He couldn't get out yeah. of the inning. Um, and they, they surrendered one run, not, not his fault. Um, but a hundred pitches. Yeah. And less than five innings work around a hundred pitches against the Washington nationals lineup that got no hit the night before. Now, let me ask you something. Is that going to be good enough when you're playing the Atlanta Braves? When you have all those full counts and you have – is that going to be good enough against the Braves or if you see the Padres again or whoever whoever you play in the NL? Is that going to be good enough? He still worries me, man. Even the yeah. Knights, he escapes pretty cleanly. There's still issues I have. You can say that I'm being picky. 
less than five innings versus the Washington Nationals because your pitch count was so goddamn high is not a good start for me. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. And I think the I think the example goes even further. It's his last three starts, right? Like, I mean, against the Pirates, we talked about that dismal performance, right? The loss against the Pirates, seven to six a couple weeks back, 4.2 innings pitched in that game. Then the next game, 5.1 innings pitched against Kansas City Royals. Loss, 7 to 5, right? Then you get to the Nationals, that's fine. You get the W, but Scoreless. 5 innings pitched. Like, you're not helping us when we have a team that needs could use another arm in the bullpen, let's be honest, right? Like, they could use help in the bullpen. And uh, your number two right now yeah. is not – helping you no, right I, like, I know i know damn well i'm nitpicking off of this it is nitpicking, especially off but, that game where you win he only gives up what one run like it, it is nitpicking no, at the it's end nitpicking, of the day, but, but you and i talked about it on wednesday before lorenzen threw that no hitter about the fact that you're one-to-one in this four game set you need to take three out of four at home against this bad nationals team let's see what lorenzen looks like in front of the home crowd and c- how that can translate to postseason ball yeah. he throws a goddamn no hitter and then this guy comes. Yeah, I get it. The run wasn't his fault. He only gave up one. Yeah. It, why is his pitch count that high? Explain. It's yeah. oh, it's been that high. And I know he leads the league in innings pitched over the last three years. And he's a warrior. And all the games earlier on in the season, he was getting through six. Well, he's not getting through six anymore. He's not. And he's one and two in his last three versus the Marlins or the, the Royals, the Pirates, and the Nationals. I'm nitpicking, but God damn, he needs to be better, man. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. So far, I mean, this start to the month, it's only two games. This has been his worst start to a month this season. I mean, quite honestly, it, it is what it is. And uh, we all know that September is Aaron Nola's best month, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. It's got to change. And to your point about Michael Lorenza and A, Goes out, throws for eight innings in his first start against the the Marlins. Obviously, my, Marlins, my point, my the team we're competing the point of against. This conversation but, was if Aaron Nola continues to look anything like untrustworthy up? as he is, Lorenzen. and Michael Lorenzen continues to deliver, not no hitters, but like a, a three ERA or a yeah. sub three or a sub three five ERA for this club, and he's going six seven strong. Michael Lorenzen should be ahead of Aaron Nola come postseason time. I'll make an argument that the other two could be ahead of Aaron Nola at that time. We'll see how it plays out. The only problem that I would say with that, I'm not familiar if Nola is built to be like an arm in the bullpen, right? Like, I don't know if that is a thing, right? Right. Whereas Ranger Suarez, you could throw him in the bullpen, and I think he would be just fine, right? Jack Fritz Um, made a very very interesting piece. Or or Jack Fritz or Mark Henry Jr. quote tweeted it. I'm forgetting now. I don't want to give credit (laughs) to the wrong person, but they both made good points, but – I think it was Mark actually talking about come postseason time. You know, we sit here and we talk about shrinking the shrinking the rotation, and there's no problem with that. But instead of you know, remember last year where we had Cindergaard throw like the first three innings, and then they turned it over to the bullpen. Well, if you shrink your rotation to let's say Wheeler, Nola, yeah. and and Lorenzen, you can't double down in Game Four with Walker and Ranger. Yeah. Walker can't throw the first three or four. Ranger takes over the next three or four, and then you yeah. hand it over to a closer. When you uh, Christopher Sanchez can be in the, you, the yeah. fact that you have six viable arms, there's no need to shrink the rotation where one of the guy doesn't even see a baseball the whole series. Yeah. That's my point. No, I agree. That's a good idea. So something that you could, should consider. Get creative. Yeah, it, not very often. Dude, I remember have, there, there's this many I, good there's arms. Been, well, I'm in the pretty unit. sure the year the year that the Nationals won the World Series and it's multiple other teams have done it. Like Scherzer closed the game. Yeah, like, there were t- it wasn't his day to pitch, but he, he pitched three nights I mean, ago. I mean, Topper did it, it with Ranger Suarez last postseason, so right. it's not that he's it's like out of the realms for Topper right. to do that. So yeah, I agree. That's not a yeah. bad idea at all. No. But uh, yeah, man, that that that's all we have for the Phillies right now. They take on a three-game set uh, starting tonight at home against the Twins. Yeah. Very winnable series. The Twins are coming off a series loss in Detroit to the Tigers, so the Phillies looking to take care of them tonight. Uh, I'm pretty sure Byron Buxton's still on the injured list. They have a couple different injuries without Bryce tonight for the Fightins, but yeah. nonetheless, Christopher Sanchez on the mound versus Dallas Keuchel. 
Yeah. Um, who I think has thrown about five innings this season. Uh, don't let that one eight ERA fool you because he's pitched in about one game. Um, but yeah, the Phillies should be okay versus like the 38 year old Dallas Keuchel tonight. And we'll see how the rest he of this legitimately has only played in one game. You are, yeah. you are correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's up there in age. Um, We'll see how it goes, man. We'll be back talking more Phillies with you guys. Uh, we won't be back next week. Next week, yeah. One last vacation in the summer. Coming back, hitting football season, boots on the ground, and we'll be back ready to go every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I From may be now. here. I may be here Monday morning just to recap the go. Eagles preseason game, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see. That, yeah. Don't don't hold out for that. But uh, yeah. if I can make it happen, get a find somebody to replace you for one day. There you um, go. They get get it going on Monday, but yeah, there most of the week we will not be here with faithful fanatic. That is yes, sir. Back next week. Have a good 